you uh, in this panel, Trusting Beyond Boundaries. Uh, uh, I hope you will really enjoy this conversation. And at the end, if, if possibly we can bring together Very much, and it's always pleasure to be here. And I think that this topic is extremely interesting, but also very complex. So that uh, about my background, uh, I'm very global, and I'm serial entrepreneur, and I have done also some uh, startup investments, and and manage also my own portfolio. So that I'm originally from Finland. Uh, I have lived in Asia so that I have been, for example, in uh, Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia and then done quite a lot of business also in Singapore and Hong Kong and, and also many other places in Asia. Then in Europe, I have uh, uh, lived uh, a long time in London uh, and in, I have been also in the US uh, so that uh, ac actually used to live also in Austin, Texas and uh, and of course spent quite a lot of time in in San Francisco also, so that in, in, in that way I, I have seen many places and uh, I, I have started uh, a few companies and uh, especially I, I would say that I have worked with software solutions and data analytics, but also FinTech is actually one area where, where we have done quite a lot during the last 10 years. We started also the first uh, uh, equity crowdfunding service in 2009. Uh, that was uh, probably the first equity crowdfunding service in the world. Uh, uh, one of my companies actually was uh, maybe the first company that started to make social network analytics in 2005. Uh, and uh, uh, so, so that I have been in, in quite many cases that have been uh, the first ones in the world uh, at the moment, I have a, a few companies in, in my portfolio, uh, for example, in uh, software, robotics, uh, personal data, and also actually something that is how, how to better manage uh, digital trust in uh, virtual environment and, and basically create also trust uh, groups of the people. So that... Uh, in 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 that way, uh, we we have I I have been involved to to build many companies and actually have a lot of international organizations so that you have people around the world working together. Even before COVID, uh, we have had in many companies the model that people can work also remotely, and in 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 that way, I think that it is linked also to this topic we talk today that how, how to get people to work together globally uh, with something. Uh, and, and then uh, I, I think that the social network and social network analytics background is also interesting because I, I, I think that, and we can come back to this, but uh, I, I, I think that the original idea of social networking services was that people could better come together. But nowadays it works sometimes in opposite way, wow. but I, I think that that's that's enough about my introduction. Okay, so we we have uh, I think we have um, in the way this this will become a dialogue. Uh, we have uh, complementary uh, careers. No? I mean, uh, I have been as well a serial entrepreneur for the past twenty five years in areas in, like uh, public toilets. Uh, uh, I developed a couple of companies uh, in Mexico that became the, the the most important because of size and, and capacity of attendance uh, uh, for public toilets uh, created for the basis the basis of the pyramid. So we attend more than ten thousand people daily. Uh, I have uh, uh, worked with philanthropy as well. No, uh, about philanthropy, I have been I, I, in 2015. I created a, 
uh, NGO that is called Illuminemos Light It Up Blue. It's a nonprofit organization dedicated to raise awareness for inclusion for people with autism and improving the quality of life in Mexico and Spanish speaking countries. Board member of Fundación Educa, a nonprofit organization focused on education for the base of the pyramid. Uh, as uh, entrepreneurship, I found a, uh, an event and marketing company in 2001. Uh, we have been working uh, uh, along the world uh, for Mexican delegations in Davos, in the United States, in different parts. So, uh, I focus uh, 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 in human uh, rights and on the basis of the pyramid. So I think we can uh, have a nice conversation. Okay. So I prepare a couple of questions so we can abort this topic. Uh, and the first one is, what do you consider to be the main problems affecting the trust between nations? Yeah, yeah, I think that it's very difficult question to answer because I think that there are so many people in the world uh, who are struggling and thinking that what what to do. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, I, I I I think that it's it's what's what's going on. It's a combination of many things that. Uh, uh, Maybe part of the problem is internal in, in many countries so that there have been people who, who, whose position haven't been so good and, and they haven't been happy for the existing uh, politics and they haven't been happy how basically some people get more money and some people must, must live with less money uh, so, so that uh, it, it has created a kind of uh, ang angry that uh, that uh, that the system doesn't work, but but then of course always when people think that system doesn't work, it doesn't uh, mean that they know exactly what has been the problem. And then it's easy always to say that the problem is in other countries, and it is uh, people from other countries that are the problem, and and this kind of na nationalism have of course become uh, more significant now during the last 10 or 15 years. And uh, I, I, I sometimes say also that I, I feel that there is too much a kind of uh, uh, zero-sum game thinking nowadays in the world. That people think that, uh, that if somebody is getting something, it's something what I cannot get in that case, so that uh, that it's it, it's like that if somebody win, somebody lose, and especially in the international politics and in international business and international uh, 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 affairs, uh, I I think that it is uh, quite uh, uh, dangerous if people start to think that if somebody win, some must somebody must lose when any anyway i think that a kind of a global economy and globalization when it was developing the thinking was that people can do much more when they work together and countries work together and and basically the uh, uh the cooperation is in important role so so that in 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 that way i think that uh, of course, it is not the only only reason, but but this kind of win lose thinking instead of win win thinking is is definitely one one issue. Also, how people trust to uh, to to other people, uh, in, especially in other countries. But then I I think that another interesting that is linked also what I said about the social networks that is a little bit uh, uh, strange. Uh, is that when people have better opportunities also to connect to people in other countries and uh, work together with people in other countries, uh, we we see at the same time that people are more and more polarized. And, uh, uh, and uh, 
always it is not uh, basically based on which country you live, but it's more like what you believe, uh, what you think about politics and that kind of thing. So that that maybe maybe at the same time, even we see uh, more nationalism, we also see that maybe sometimes people are more polarized inside the country, but they might have still more contacts also to other countries. But but definitely as a whole, it's it's very complex situation. Yes, yes. And, and for example, do, do you think that showing our strengths and weaknesses is the best way to get close? Uh, I I think that always if people learn to know each other and talk to each other, it should be good. Uh, so so that uh, that if you have uh, friends, for example, in other countries, and if you have uh, friends who have different opinions, I I would say that it's typically positive. Uh, at the same time, what I think that it's going on in the social media is that uh, it's not really any more social networking as we think normally what is social networking. That I, I mean that people who you know, people you trust, people with whom you want to discuss uh, on personal level. I think that the, 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 the services that were called social networking services, I think that social media is much better name for them because most of people just want to talk. They don't want to listen to anybody. So that uh, I, I sometimes say that they are not social networking services. They are multi-broadcasting services when all people tell about their own opinions, but no one is really ready to listen to other people. And I think that it is one of the starting points why people are so divided when they basically like to listen to uh, opinions they like and they like to hate opinions they don't like uh, so so that uh, then, then they just tell their own opinions and it's not really any one-to-one -one conversations that I try to understand another person. Yes, yes. I agree with you that it's, it's, it's easy to speak, not to listen. Mm. And then uh, about nations, we have uh, uh, different uh, sizes of nations, these different capabilities and strengths of nations. No? For example, between Mexico and United States, we have the, the main world power, and Mexico is the 15th economy. So, in, not necessarily is a, 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 a equivalent conversation. No? It, it, it's a disparate one. So in, in this way, what do you think uh, we should uh, uh, abort the conversation? Is it just a matter of, of, of listening and, and empathy? Yeah, yeah, definitely that is needed. Uh, I, I don't know if that is enough Be because uh, I, I don't know so well the situation uh, between Mexico and, and the US, but of course I know it on, on the general level. And uh, uh, I, I, I think that the situation is, uh, is uh, some, sometimes also funny that when people have very strong opinions, what they think about other people. Let's say that what a person in, in the US might think about a person in Mexico. They, they are always very simplified models. And even then if they know some people uh, in reality, it, it, it looks like that, that, let's take example that there might be a person Uh, who is very, who has very strong opinions, uh, a person in the US who have very strong opinions about people in Mexico. He might know some Mexican people in the US. And then when, if you ask from him that, uh, that do you think the same also about these people, you know, 
they often say that, no, no, I, I don't mean about these people I know. They are good people. But then there are some other people who try to come out over the border and, and they are something. So, so that uh, in, in, in that way, I think that people are, are not very logical how, how they think about these, these questions, but, but that how, how, how to better, for example, to, to get, uh, the, for, for example, better living standard uh, to people in different places uh, and, and, uh, and that kind of things. Of course, they are so complex questions that I think that it's better that I don't even start to talk about those. Yeah. Okay. Uh, um, do you think it is a matter of how profits distribute in this win-loss game instead of win-win? Do you think that's the... the... Uh, of, of course, I think that there are all kinds of questions also, for example, uh, uh, in in the global economy and uh, uh, global business, that uh, that uh, it is sometimes so that those who have more money, it's easier to make also more money, and and they can better also define the rules uh, uh, for 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 certain things. But but then, if we think, for example, the situation between countries, I think that they are always many factors and uh, uh, it's really uh, really hard to explain, explain all those things that uh, uh, how, how it exactly work but if we think more for example <coughs> trust only trust between countries and between people in different countries uh, anyway I think that the com a kind of open communication to to get uh, parties to, to, to better understand each other is the starting point. But of course, if people feel that something is very unfair, that even if I talk with somebody, but I see that it's very unfair situation, he gets all money, I don't get any money. Of, of, of course, it is a problem and it's, it's hard to, hard to, then trust the other person or trust the system. And, uh, and especially in the global economy between countries, uh, I think that to have a kind of system and also fair rules is important. Of course, one problem is that no one can force these rules. And I think that what we saw, for example, with the, uh, with the previous president in the U.S., when he didn't respect too much any international rules, it's very hard for anybody to come to say that that is not fair, that everybody should follow the rules. When basically it always is based on a kind of cooperation of the countries. And if countries are not willing to cooperate, it's hard to force it. Yes, I agree with you. It is, it is a, matter of multifactorial factorial, uh, circumstances that, that can help build the trust or distrust. No? As you say, it's a matter of the president who's, who's running the country. It's a matter of, of, of uh, foreign affairs. It's a matter of, com of commerce. So it's, it's not a as simple and as lineal as a, as one factor, no? Mm. So, yeah, and if if I if I can comment when, uh, for for example, I I have worked a little bit that how people could better trust to other people and uh, uh, build trust uh, uh, online or a kind of digital trust. That how, for example, when you meet some people online, how you could basically build trust also to this person. And this is coming more and more important also nowadays when, especially during the COVID time. And uh, uh, I think that the trust is something that always takes time. And I often say that trust is based on some positive experiences together 
that uh, for for example in uh, online or virtual environment i think that approach is sometimes too technical that we we just think that if you if you can be verified based on the certain model or if your communication is encrypted or or if you uh, can fulfill certain requirements then you can be trusted and of course if we think that for example you go to uh, apply a loan from a bank the bank is especially interested in this kind of trust that are you able to pay back uh, <clears throat> what is uh, uh, how reliable person is you are and how much uh, you earn money that you can really pay back but if we talk about uh, trust between people then it's different so that trust is something that is just one thing trust is very uh, personal and it's all always also depending on the context as as uh, let's give example that i can trust to some of my relatives on on general level but for example i don't trust that they are able to fix my computer but i there might be another person i trust who is able to fix the computer and that's why i think that when we talk about trust uh, it's it's very complex term because we cannot say that there is one model that is the trust it's typically very personal and for example uh, trust for the institutions is different from trust on personal level and it's also uh, uh, basically it depends on context that i trust to somebody in certain contexts but to somebody else in another context yes yes and digital context is is another new con uh, context oh, from the past yeah. year it, it it gave us a new context in which no one knows exactly how how to build trust no we we are working on it as as we run it no yeah so uh you got uh, trade and business between companies and people of different nations are based on trust on some occasions the government policy does not facilitate them no? as you said with your past president or uh, as in our case Mexico's president doesn't help to build trust. Uh, so can you explain to us how you think this phenomenon has impacted the technology industry and how companies have turned it around? Yeah, I think that one starting point is that uh, that uh, in those countries where generally people trust to each other it's much easier to make long-term business so be, be, because 10 people can really uh, trust for example uh, to agreements that if i agree something i can trust that other people keep the agreement but if the trust is very low then typically you you cannot make long-term thinking you must basically focus to maximize your win in each transaction so that basically that uh, i i try to make a lot of money quickly and run away if i simplify it uh, but but in 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 the system where you can really trust to other parties then it is much easier also, also to make investments long-term thinking and and basically uh build something in in long run and uh, I think that it is very important basis uh, from the business point of view, and uh, uh, in 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 that way, I would say that it is value. It's definitely value in any country if the trust can be improved, and uh, in 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 that way, get also people and companies and all parties make more long-term thinking. 
I, I, I agree with you. And it is, again, a multifactorial uh, 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 key points to build the trust between countries. No? Uh, uh, Yoko, what are, uh, what, on your perspective, what are the key points for building trust in the digital arena? Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a hard question, and actually, 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 we we try to solve it in in one company. And uh, uh, first of all, it's not only technical. So so that you you cannot say that that when when this person basically pass certain identification process or this uh, uh, person pass uh, know your customer KYC process, it's a uh, it's one way to to increase trust, but it's not enough. And especially when we talk uh, trust between people, I would say that it's always a kind of long term, little bit at least little bit longer term thinking. So 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 that you must, could I say, get some experiences together with another person, so that you can see in action that you can trust to somebody. And then it's also something that on certain level you can transfer trust so that uh, if I trust you and then you say that uh, you introduce, for example, somebody to me and, and you say that you trust to him, it definitely immediately give higher trust to me also to this person. So, so, so that time uh, to, to do it so, so that it's, it's not based on the individual transactions. It's a kind of a, uh, over time uh, action so that, for example, if you have more emails and more WhatsApp messages with somebody and you have all the time communication and you lear learn to know the person and, and that kind of things, uh, that, that is one way to build trust also uh, with, with, with somebody. And do you think the, 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 the technological, this digital arena allows you to uh, get to know uh, people or each other uh, to build that basic trust for business or for personal relations? Uh, I think that at least in some cases, yes. That I, I think that especially now during the last 12 months, we have seen when people have been forced to do more at home and do more online, that there, there have been many things that have actually worked quite well also in, in, in this way. And of course, it's not exactly the same uh, as when you can meet person physically. But in, in some cases, I, I would say that uh, we have seen that it has worked surprisingly well. And of course, there are still quite a lot what you can improve also that I, I would say that this, this time has been also huge leap for many technical solutions, how you can better work together, better communicate with other people, and also better evaluate the trust to other people online. Uh, and I believe that this is going to continue so that it's not only uh, the COVID time, but it's going to uh, continue. But this time has significantly accelerated this process. But, but definitely, I think that at the same time, what I said about the social networking tools uh, or social media, uh, I think that they haven't really worked very well in this area. Uh, one example is that how many fake profiles there are. Uh, actually, mm -hmm. Facebook loads billions of fake profiles annually. And uh, if we look at LinkedIn, that should be a professional network. There are many fake profiles that try to sell something to you and so on, so that 
that uh, there is still plenty plenty of work to do because at this at the, in the case of covid uh, we have two different relations i mean we have personal relations built before uh, covid and we the only way we have to keep on going with our relations is a digital uh, uh, communication but to build new relations uh, post covid Uh, knowing from zero, from scratch, in, in, in a relation uh, in the digital area becomes, I think it becomes quite complicated, no? To, to build that confidence, that trust. Yeah. We, we got our third panelist now, maybe. Maybe he can oh. speak now. Oh, who is, who is there? I, I can yeah. see you. Hello, uh, good good afternoon. I don't know the timing uh, of our panelists. Uh, my name is Ajmal Shams from Afghanistan. Hello, uh, Ajmal. Wise. Hi, how are you? I'm sorry, I was having some technical problem um, uh, joining the, uh, the, the, the panel. So sorry for the delay. Um, So let me uh, just briefly introduce myself. I'm already a bit late, and then we straight away can get into the uh, discussion. Uh, I'm Ajmal Shams. It's a bit late in Afghanistan. Uh, I'm vice president of the Afghanistan Social Democratic Party. Uh, I was also uh, a deputy minister for the Ministry of Urban Development for a couple of years. So... Um, So, uh, how, how would you like to, to, to proceed? Because you're already in the middle of discussion. So, um, yeah. Uh, Who's, uh, 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 oh, 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 welcome. Uh, it was uh, like a kind of confusion about the hour, but uh, we are happy that you are here. And we are, uh, uh, I sent you an email with some questions, and if, if we just have. Uh, I mean, like 10 minutes remaining. So if, if you want to participate with one of them, uh, it could be great in, in a couple of minutes. So the first one should be uh, Afghanistan shares a border with six different countries and a complex relationship with them, especially with Pakistan and Iran and China. What has been the key to solving their challenges? Do you consider solidarity as the key? Um, you know, we have been uh, occupying a very true strategic and critical location. Uh, Afghanistan has historically um, acted as a bridge uh, or a gateway to, to, to South Asia. Uh, all invaders from, from Central Asia, they have used Afghanistan as a gateway and entered uh, into, into South Asia. Now, looking from that perspective, um, Afghanistan has not been able to use its location uh, as an asset. Uh, it has always remained a victim of its location. And unfortunately, we have not... Uh, Uh, the geopolitics of the region and the international rivalries uh, have have affected Afghanistan. Afghanistan has been a victim of, of those rivalries, both at regional level and, and international level. Now we are in a very um, critical stage uh, because the peace process has entered a very critical stage. Um, uh, we, are, we are a bit optimistic that if... Uh, If there is regional consensus on Afghanistan and if there is international consensus on Afghanistan peace process, then Afghanistan will certainly enter a new phase um, in, its, in its life. And I think it will be a new opportunity for the people and the government of Afghanistan to, to have a completely new uh, understanding with its neighbors and with the international community. So now we are having a, a, a great opportunity, but at the same time, we are in very challenging environment. 
So it is up to the uh, leadership of the Afghan government. Uh, it is up to the leadership of, um, um, you know, uh, Afghan leaders and politicians, how they can take advantage of the opportunity and steer the country toward uh, stability uh, and peace. So, so, so as, 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 as the question is um, about neighbors, the, 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 the cent- both the Central Asian neighbors to the north and, and to the west, Iran and to the east, Pakistan, all these neighbors, I mean, they have, we have to have, we have to reach uh, consensus with them um, and have a good understanding how Afghanistan can be more of a stabilizing force rather than a destabilizing um, element in the region, and that's the important thing that can that we can we, we can work together and move forward. Okay, uh, we have six minutes remaining, so I would like to answer to to make you one question more, and then the same question to you both, so we can get some conclusions. So in in this matter of time, we have six minutes remaining. So. Uh, Armal, I, I will ask you, how does your role influence the construction of solidarity, empathy towards human matters? Do you find same will on your neighbors to collaborate? And then we have four minutes uh, for the next question I will do to both of you. Yeah, I think it's, um, it's very important, as I, as I mentioned before, um, for the political community of Afghanistan, the political parties, uh, they have an important role to play. Uh, and, and because you see the, 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 the role of the political parties is crucial because they are the bridge uh, between the people and, 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 and the government. They, they represent the people because people people voice can be represented through political parties. Although uh, we are a young democracy, uh, we are still evolving. But I think political parties should be given a chance and they have uh, uh, some chance to, 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 to play a crucial role at this very important stage in, in Afghanistan politics. Thank you. Thank you. So the last question for both of you is how do you consider that uh, uh, politics, technology must collaborate to achieve a powerful formula that allows building trust and collaboration in, to face the common problems such as migration, refugees, and COVID-19? Uh, would you like to start? It's so hard question that I don't really like to start. Uh, uh, I, 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 I don't know any miracle solution for it, this. Uh, I, I think that any, anyway, I think that the kind of st- stability of the uh, uh, society is always important uh, point so that if you develop business, if you develop technology, uh, you must uh, have a, uh, basically all people involved and somehow equal opportunities to all people and, and so that the people can fair, uh, feel that the system is fair. So, so that if we think technology development, uh, it gives a lot of opportunities, but also if it leaves some people out, then it is a problem. And it is the same with the business that if your economy goes up, that's excellent but it's much better if it gives much more opportunities and much more value to many people. So, so that I think that the, the role of the politics is especially to, to create this kind of fair, stable system that this development is value to all people. Oh, thank you, Jonko. Uh, Armal, would you like, uh, I will repeat the question for you. How do you consider that politics, technology, and, and companies must collaborate to achieve a powerful formula that allows building trust and collaboration to face common problems such as migration, refugees, and COVID-19? Yeah, I think it's, uh, you know, this COVID-19, 
um, I think it was a milestone um, and a turning point in, 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 in human history. It has shown uh, to the entire world the, the importance of inter interdependencies. You know, uh, how this, has, this COVID uh, has affected uh, the entire world uh, originated in China and spreading around to, to almost every country in the world. It has, it has, it has given a new um, opportunity for, 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 the, for, for all nations to have a new look at how the, 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 the politics, uh, technology, uh, businesses, how they can redefine uh, their, their relationship based on these new uh, dynamics which have emerged uh, and which, have, which, which human, humans have, have witnessed in the aftermath of, of COVID-19. So I think the, 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 the world will never be the same again. Pre-COVID-19 and post-COVID-19 would be a different world. And I think it's important um, for, the, for the leaders of the international community to realize this point and redefine the, 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 their, uh, their relationships based on politics, technology, and, 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 and business environment. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, time has run out. It is a pleasure to meet you both, Yoko and Arnal. Uh, thank you for your time and, and thank you for this panel. Thank you. Yeah, it was thank pleasure you for hosting us. Yeah, it was See a pleasure. You. It's a pleasure. See you soon. Thank, thank you. you. Bye now.